we've got to understand just how different it would be. But we can do that by preparing our hearts and minds. Like Jesus said, store your treasures in heaven. Know what your treasures are. It's each other. That no, Understand, no man is an island to himself. When I think about all the people that have served me throughout my life, all the mechanics, all the clerks, all the people working on farms and growing my food, <coughs> the transportation industry bringing me my stuff, you know, making my clothing, building my cars, my watches, you know, all the stuff that people have done for me through the years. And I think back, you know what, thank you. I love you. And that's a beautiful thing, you see? That's how the system would work. That's why sound currency is a means to the end. But we've got to understand, you know, why we're picking on the Muslim world, really get to the bottom, the country's in debt. So I don't know how there's money to fund these wars, but you see, the banks are fronting the money to the government, which is you and me, the public. And so we're going further in debt to fund these things, but really they hate these people because they don't want to go under debt. You know, they already have egalitarian uh, governments in a lot of those countries. Yeah, they're theocratic in a lot of ways, you know, with the, the, the Muslim, the Islam dominating the politics and making their demands. But, it, but it, in a way, it's good. It worked good for the people, and they don't want anybody threatening that. So they hate people that represent the Western world and usury, and the banks try to put debt on them. Okay, they, don't, they instinctively hate it. They're brought up in that culture. And if we were brought up in that culture, we'd understand a lot better. And people need to think about that. What if this? What if that? How much of life is a crapshoot? Unless you, you know, subliminally believe in reincarnation. But I think God knows what he's doing. I think if, you know, if you're an elitist Rothschild and you think, oh, it was my right, you know, because God loves me and I'm so blessed that he's going to let me be born into another Rothschild dynasty. I'll just, you know, so this is this mindset. It's sick. That's how come these people, they raise sick kids. But no, if you're God Almighty, you're going to say, no, what you need, Mr. Rothschild, is to be born in some third world country and to roam the streets hungry and begging for food. That's what you need to understand what's really important. Okay, so, you know, the whole reincarnation idea of you know, this is why I was born into this wealthy lot and this is why my life is so good and blessed because God loves me more than others and endowed me with this intelligence to make money. But making money is not that... It doesn't take that great of intelligence. In fact, they've shown that more than half the millionaires in America don't have a high school diploma. No, I mean, how many real estate moguls out there that just learn, wow, all I have to do is borrow money from the bank and they're more than happy to lend it to me and as long as I pay the money back. So you're teamed up, you know, that's what happens. So you're borrowing other people's money, OPM. It's insured by the government, you and me. So at the end of the day, we all pay the price. So you invest and people, oh, investors are good and you know gentrifying neighborhoods and you wonder why people in poor neighborhoods are are, are, are are objecting and speaking out because they don't want to be oppressed people don't want to be oppressed they know don't drive my cost of living up my cost of living is my burden and you say but it advantages me don't take it personally it's just business well if you're living outside the golden rule the two commandments of God love God above all else and love one another as yourselves treat each other the way you want to be treated then you won't do it. You won't engage in any business practices unless you are willing to be on the other end of that business practice. So we all gotta be ruthlessly honest when it comes to that. And understand that you know, within us is great potential to live together in peace and harmony on the face of this earth, okay? And it just, it's very simple. And all the commandments would fall into place. I know I haven't touched on all of them, but let's think of some other ones now. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Well, you're not going to do that. You're not going to lie about somebody else, okay? If, if that's not how you want to be treated, you don't want anybody lying. It's logical. It's, you know, so yes, what Jesus said, if you do these two things, all the other ones will fall in place. You're not going to sleep with your neighbor's wife. You, you want your neighbor sleeping with your wife? No. So you're not going to commit adultery. So let's see, you're, you're not going to steal. Unless you want somebody stealing from you, who wants somebody stealing from them? You see how this works? <coughs> what else is there? Um, thou shalt love God above all else. Okay, well, that's already, that's the number one commandment. And uh, I guess the others for the for temporarily elude me. But the point is, is that 
if you treat others the way you want to be treated, you will succeed. And what you will succeed at is you will succeed at pleasing your owner. And that's good. You want to be owned. I mean, isn't that wonderful to know that there's this almighty, all-powerful God that's loving you every moment of your life, carrying you on his back, looking after you, caring about you, everything, the minutia of your thoughts. He's in there in those dark areas of your mind. He goes there with you. He's willing to and to love you and to lift you so that you can help others to to understand the, the more important things and to lift other people out of their darkness, help them to be his hands and feet, eyes and ears and mouth on the ground to exalt humanity so that we will reach for higher levels because that's what we really need to do. But at the end of the day, it comes down to being truly happy. And being truly happy, it, in, it, it encompasses a lot of different uh, uh, components. Okay, true happiness, I want to be safe. Don't you want to feel safe? That's a good feeling. At peace, peaceful. You want peace in society. You want to be secure. That is part of safety. So you can't be oppressed. You can't worry about having a cost of living because then you're not free. Then you are, are, are enslaved and subjugated from birth. So you need to be free from money. And that's why it's so important to understand economic matters when it comes to spiritual matters. Because this is how we've been duped. And this is what it's done to us. It's affected all of our minds, all of ours. And that includes me, believe me. Like I've already divulged, you know, I can go to some pretty dark places at times. And I feel my humanness. And it doesn't feel good. And I've got to turn to God for help. And just to cope. And to say, you know, what is it? Why? Why would I, I need to sabotage my own joy, my own happiness? But I look around me, I see this world filled with such misery, such, such awful, awful tyranny, unnecessary human suffering, and I want to get my share. I feel a need to get my share, and I don't want it. I can't even appreciate all the great blessings that God bestows on me while constantly the world is taking from me. I can't stand my brothers and sisters suffering unnecessarily around the world. I know what's going on here and I know it could be stopped tomorrow. I see poverty as a collective wound on the body of humanity. And we're hemorrhaging out at the bottom. People are literally dying out on the streets tonight. Your brothers, your sisters, my brothers, my sisters. Yes, in an existential way, looking through the eyes of God, okay? And I can't enjoy my life while ignoring this fact. I've got to confront it. And we've got to confront the money masters and we've got to demand justice, an end to it. We want the problem solved. We demand the problem solved. Remember, we're God's hands and feet, eyes and ears on the ground. And we can do something. We can preempt the return of Jesus by starting the thing off, helping make straight the, the, the paths for the Lord to come in and to take over this world and to rule, prepare ourselves and cultivate it. And it won't be so traumatic when it happens because that's the world of tomorrow. That's what's coming. We've all got to learn to, love, to live together in peace and harmony without this false god known as money. Okay? So, best to everybody out there. I love you all. And I, I do. I wish the best for everybody. I really do. Because that's what I want for myself. That's what I want for my kids. It's, of course, it's what I want for you and your kids and everybody. Why not, you know? But we've got to confront these things because these problems aren't going away unless we confront them, you know? So anyhow, we'll talk again sometime and uh, have a great day.